We're talking about some of his rock and roll exploits uh, in recent recent times and, and going back a ways. Because what years were you in the Big Town Playboys? Well, let me think. I would say that was around 2000. 2000? Yeah, it was okay. around 2000. I think 2001, yeah. 2002, around that period. Uh -huh. I'm pretty sure it was that, that period. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and well, and you you ended up filling in when Mike Sanchez left. Well, when, when, so I think they had, they had, they had a little break when Mike left the band. Uh -huh. um, and then then Ian uh, that I've known for, for, forever. Well, it all goes back. We the all bass know player. It, yeah, we all yeah. know each other from back when I was playing in this rent party band, piano piano. Right. Because so, we were on the same gigs, you know. Right. And our brass section used to play with with the Big Sam Playboys and and did the. The Robert Plant stuff. I'm trying to think. Was it Honey Drippers? Well, he did a Honey Drippers, and we did a load. You of, guys played with him, but the, the, our brass section did. Oh, the brass section. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so there was a connection there, right. and, and everything, you know. But right. he, so Ian knew me, and so he asked me if I wanted to do the try the piano, you know. Uh -huh. um, um, and we had Big Joe Lewis. Big Joe singing. Singing, singing yep. yeah. Big Joe Lewis. Yeah, we made an album. I think Western World. I think it's called. We made an album. Um, it's a great album. It's really good. Uh, and then the f following album, uh, Ian said we're going to do an album and use his connections that, that he's made over the years to get in guesting on. And we had uh, um, Jules Holland was playing on it, and I think oh, Andy okay. Fairweather Low was playing wow. tracks okay. on it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the one that that I got to meet was was Jeff Beck, right? Which was on the track called "Look Out, Mabel," where I was playing piano. Um, I wasn't singing on that one. Um, and I think we had a guide vocal on that one to go by, and mm -hmm. and say so Jeff Jeff just came in and, and he he would he's everything that everybody says about him being a humble guy, he, really easy going, really easy to work with, um, made you feel really relaxed, you know. I mean, he's a right. he's a giant of a yeah, a, a, sure a, a, yeah, he's an icon, yeah. you know. Right. It's Jeff Beck in the right. studio, you know. Uh, and he's asking us if it's all right. <laughs> you know, was that all right? Are you sure? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Do you want me to do it again? Yeah, that that's kind beautiful. Of magic. Yeah. It's wonderful. And I yeah. say he just had his old Telecaster, and I can remember him flipping it up, getting the screwdriver out, and sort of pulling it about and pulling things and right, right. messing about with it. I'm going to do sort of thing. Right. Didn't expect, and, and he just sort of, oh, God. and there was a couple of Fender amps. He goes, oh, I'll play through that one, I think. Let's try that one. And, and my old Valve copycat, as I said, old Watkins copycat, tape echo. He said, oh yeah, I'd like to use that. And he set it up and I did a proper slap back echo on a tape that's on the record. And um, and and he just said to me, to me and Ian, he said, how do you want me to play? You know, because he can do anything. I'm sure. You know, he's a, he's, he's, sure. he's a master. Yeah. Um, and we 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 just had discussed it before, and we said, what's the point of having Jeff Beck playing on a record, playing something that any really good guitarist could do? Right. Which would emulate, if you're a certain standard, you could emulate another guitarist, give right. yourself a bit of time. Right. You know, uh, if you're worth it. Wait. But he's Jeff Beck, so let's just have him play, play Jeff Beck. Play Jeff Beck, right. why not? You know, if you hold Jeff Beck on it, what, yeah. what, 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 what's the point of having you yeah. people saying, who plays guitar on that? You know, right. But right. there's no question who plays guitar on it. Yeah. When now. Um, and he did, and he did, only did it in one go, he just went through. Yeah. And then it was great because uh, the, 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 the prop, vocal proper, as it could be called, uh, was done by Robert Plant. Wow! So, so it's Robert Plant okay. and Jeff Beck, who so giants in our wow in the English music English yeah. industry. Um, I'm on a record with them, so that's that was, great. That's quite yeah. nice. It is know, quite nice. Know. Yeah, I'm nothing richer. Uh, well, <laughs> but, I'm sure. But, but, uh, but it's, kind of the way it goes, yeah, right? You know, yeah. But it, 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 yeah, so we got to all do you that. have is the glory. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, and the other thing we spoke about in the break was uh, the connection with Roger Daltrey, which right. comes from. Um, the late Wilco Johnson, which is which is a guy that I've I've known. And was he in was he in uh, uh, Nine Below Zero? No, he was, was in Doctor Phil. Oh, he Dr. was one Phil of the original then. members of Doctor Phil. Right, right. And were, but it's hard hitting four piece. Um, he he did leave the band. Um, mm -hmm. uh, seventy seven, I think he mm -hmm. left. But um, I might be wrong there. But I think it was seventy seven. He left the band. 
But uh, he used to come to my shows in South End all the time, and he, uh -huh. loved, he loved my guitar player Paul Garner, and he really liked my harmonica playing. And he lived in Essex. Where oh yeah, he lived in my yeah, town. Right, yeah, right. He lived, in, he lived in my town. Right. Um, and uh, I just got a call from his management and says, uh, I knew he was, do I knew he was doing this record with Roger, and he just mm. says, uh, Wilco wants you to play some harmonica on on the album. Right. Did you fancy doing it? You know, yeah. Let me think about that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Hey, Zuni, uh, Roger Daltrey? Nah, I'm gonna uh, who, who? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I went and went down and, and and did that session, and uh, and and it was um, it was it, it, the record came out great, and the record actually in the in the independent charts went to number one in the national LP charts. It got to number three. That's awesome. Which is incredible. You know, yeah. I was yeah. I was really thinking this. Is the start of something, you know. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't. It but you is. can say you did. Yeah, yeah. I was. I mean, I was like, this time next year, darling. Right. Know, we'll be millionaires. Yeah, we'll <laughs> so all be riding in a limo to work. Yeah, uh, but it, it's just and and I've, I've last year I I got to tour with um with Roger Daltrey. He invited me to do his what his uh, solo tour. He was uh -huh. playing songs from all his career, so he did right. some Who songs and, right. um, from his solo albums, and he did uh, three songs from um, the album with Wilco Johnson. Yeah, going back up that I was on. Now, was this just in the UK, or did you guys oh, no, we did, go we did, to we Europe? Did, we just did the UK. Okay, yeah, we just did the UK for one yeah. month. Well, that must have been awesome. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely fantastic. I mean, it was uh, it was hard just doing the two songs i did i mean roger being roger says anything you think you can play on that we're playing stuff, right just join in right so there were a few things like squeeze box i knew a little bit i could do a little bit on that right and i could join in with some of the songs but yeah. of course they're, they're, they're not the not harmonica the harmonica is so dominant i know it is you know yeah, you can I know i in my opinion it's only worth putting on if it enhances it right right <laughs> if it takes something away exactly shut up. <laughs> no that's right i <laughs> you know, agree with that uh, yeah. and and and, this, and most of the songs that the, the, the style that roger does as a solo thing the focus uh, i always look at music there's a focus going on the focus is the vocal right so if anything is on the background that takes your ear away right that's spoiling it right and you know there's lovely lovely guitars and stuff going on but you don't sort of yeah. listen to that 12 string you don't do that you listen to the vocal well i had so you, have, you have a harmonica there you have, what's that going on i heard a really interesting story yeah. from magic dick about when he was asked by uh mick jagger to join on a on an australian tour right and i think for a recording and uh it ended up being this thing where uh, the management kind of said, you know, with both of you guys on stage, it draws away from Mick, uh, you know. Yeah. So there is that element of, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I always think that- And it, it makes sense. It is a folk. I mean, makes I mean sense. that's the wonderful thing, I mean, with the things like you and I like, when you listen, when I listen to Walter backing up Muddy, you still listen to Muddy. Oh, yeah. It's just enhancing it. Right, right. You know? He was if you, pushing Muddy. If you take it away, the record's still good, but it's better with the harp in. Oh, yeah. You know? Uh, but once you start putting the harp in and you start listening to the harp and not the vocal, you're taking something away. Well, I also heard that, Mud, uh, that Muddy's record sold a lot better when he had Walter. Yeah, yeah. You know, they it sold is, records. You know, like and then it cut, and, you know, he's, he's, he's swooping around and he's. he's, he's popping them around in the background, it doesn't get in the way right. at all. Right. And then it's time for the solo, because it's, yeah. he's, he's, it's always going to be half solo. If he's in there, it's, right. it's going to be half solo. And he knew and how to, just, the oh. other thing is he really knew how to kind of dodge in and out yeah, of the vocal. Yeah, And, and that's and what it, made it really I interesting. I mean, because there's, there's that school of, when the vocal's going, you shut up, and then you play a little thing after it, which is kind of uh, quite a discipline that's, uh, that works. Oh, yeah. Walter, he's over the top of it, and he's through it, and everything, sure. and weaving yeah. in and out of it. Yeah. And that's the bit I really like. That same here. Uh, I mean, I, yeah, I, the I, weaving I, part. I, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm lucky to play with his son, Mud Moore. Right, right, let's talk uh, about that a little and bit. And that is, yeah. I mean, it's the cop. I mean, it, I'm sure it was always said the best chair around for a harp player is in the Muddy Waters band. Right. Right and, and and I think this is kind of the if you like you and I how we play the right. best chair is back oh yeah because he's he sounds like he's bad yeah, he know? sure does yeah you know and you're getting to, same tone yeah, and yeah. you get to play those it's songs good, and that's the thing yeah. if you if you play Mojo working in your band and if you play Hoochie Coochie Man thinks oh they're doing that old chest right. again uh, but they are great songs oh yeah, yeah. and they've got um, but you're doing them with him 
Right. It's, it's perfectly okay, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. And and I it is. It, it, and I like both those schools of thought. I think, yeah, we don't want to plant those old chestnuts that everybody knows, you know, plays. Right. But sometimes the measure of a good plan is playing a classic and doing it properly. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You know, sometimes that is a measure of a good plan. Yeah. No, I yeah. agree. You know. But you just don't want to make a, 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 a whole set list of no. Stormy Monday and no, it, got it, my mojo it, working course, and course messing is. with the kid. Yep. And, I mean, they're, 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 they're evergreens, whatever you call them, yeah. classics, and, uh, but sometimes they're, they're old chestnuts, as they say. Right. You know? Battleships of the yeah. blues. Yeah. You know, there was... Um, <laughs> but... But you know they're great songs, and if you and if if, if Junior was still around and you went to see him, you'd want to see him do it. <laughs> sure, hell yeah. yeah. You wouldn't see him do messing with it. Hell kid, yeah, you know? yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But that, yeah, so that that is that is one of my favourite jobs. Is, so now, how long have you been doing that with Mud? Since two thousand and eight. Okay, so that's whenever quite a while. he comes to England, um, yeah. it's always me, and if it, but Europe mostly is me as well. Right. Right. Um, and there is another guy, Lloyd Garman, if I can't, who steps in, and mm -hmm. Giles King steps in. Right. The gigs that I I may be booked out on something else. Right. Yeah. I think he's going to be here tonight. Who's that? Lauren. Oh, yeah, Lloyd, yeah, yeah, Lloyd, Lloyd, yeah. yeah, I dare say he will be. Yeah. yeah. He's a good friend of mine. Yeah. Right, great harmonica player. Good. Uh, and I play with the, must I keep forgetting to mention, not, must have not mentioned them, is Trick Bag in right. Sweden. Right, Trick Bag, well. yeah, right. I know they've been kind of steady. Uh, yeah, and that's since 2010, yeah. I think, I've been right. playing. Right. Right. It's with them. And also playing with Tommy Lino. Oh, with Tommy Lino, yeah. yeah I made right. the album with him. Right. You know, right. Great, great musician and a good friend of mine. Yeah. 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 Great. great. Guy. He's a great musician. You should play with yourself many times as well. He's amazing. You yeah. know, I think I've done about three or four yeah. trips with those yeah. guys. But he's, yeah. a, he's just a great guy. He sure is. He's yeah. an unbelievable musician. Yeah. Yeah. Drums, harmonica, and guitar. Piano, he plays. He, he plays, plays piano now? He plays piano. I, I did a jam session. I hate him. Uh, yeah, I was, doing a, <laughs> I, I was playing a jam session, and I was going off, and I was doing an old Sonny Boy number, and I, I thought, oh, he's playing, playing the piano. Look, man, it was him. Wow. He was on the piano. Crazy. And it, was, it was okay, you know, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. What That's he was crazy, doing. yeah. Um, uh, and he, he, a double bass. He, he bought a double Jesus. bass. He bought a double bass for Lars to use. Uh -huh. Lars from, from Sweden when he right. came to say bring him one over so he bought one for the studio and Lars could use it you could he could gig there's no question you could gig he could do a gig yeah and he'd be great god that's he's slapping crazy. it and everything does the whole yeah. thing he's a great drummer I know that I know he's a good drummer yeah. I heard and that, a great harp I heard that RJ missed, he said RJ missed you I drummed with RJ when he first came over oh did he? yeah I didn't um, know that when he first came over this is a story I heard that he drummed with him uh, because they couldn't get a drummer <laughs> right so he sold the drums yeah. uh, but he, he played the drums wow. and RJ loved it so much he wanted him on the drums on the next trip so really? he, never, he never got to play guitar That's again because he really wanted to play guitar wow. and he only did drums because no one else could, was available see what happens and now he's stuck <laughs> you know but I think I think RJ has him playing guitar now yeah so I got I got one more story that I wanted you to tell uh, that I love about when I, because you know I'm a big Peter Green fan. Oh, I know the story, yeah. Yeah, and you said, uh, just tell the story about well, it was you a, were playing. A, it was a, it was this was this was at West Western's Blue Sonics, and we were playing uh, a tiny coffee house in in, Kent, in the county of Kent. It was mm -hmm. a small county, and the guitarist we had at the time was a fellow called Richard Studholm, and he he had connections with Peter, and he knew the the people that, that were managing him and looking after him, and he he played met him. And, and they were friends, you know. Right. And uh, um, and they and they, and they turned up, and mm -hmm. they were sitting at a a little coffee table. And um, did you know it was him? Yeah, we knew it was him. Oh, we you could, did uh, know well, it was Richard him. told me. Says, oh, okay. Got a bit of green shit, you know. All right. Like, oh, I've got a bit of green shit. And um, it was actually sitting. Well, he was he was sitting with Francesca's mum. Okay. Uh, Dexter's wife. Yeah. And she yeah. she was there and she was right. sitting at the bar there and she she's the one that he spoke to and she actually came up to us she said spoke to Peter and Peter just said I had a blues band once. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that, uh, we went what? Oh, he said, he, he said, it's, so, it's sad because he you know yeah. he wasn't well and yeah. he just said I had a blues band once. She goes I know Peter. <laughs> 
and uh, and he loved he loved the band. He absolutely loved. Now, the didn't band. you say he came up and looked at your amp or something? Uh, no, he, he he just he he just liked the sound of the band, and he said he said to the guys that were with him, he goes, "That's the sound I want you to get me when I play on stage." Wow, yeah, yeah. that's a pretty big yeah. compliment, man. Yeah, and th there's another story. That it's a funny story. I don't know if it's, if it's funny to me. I was in the market for buying a Fender Twin Reverb for Hart because mm -hmm. because Mark Felton at uh, Nine Below Zero had was really successful using one, hmm. that big old heavy thing. Yeah. And I was looking everywhere and one came up for sale. Well, no, I found one shop that said, well, I'm gonna give you a number of a guy, but it's it's very um, private. You, 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 you be careful. I thought, what's this look at? So I found the number and said, I believe you've got a twin reaver for sale. So I went to, to see this guy in this farm in South End. And there's all these pictures of B.B. King up and Jango Ryan up. And at this bit of time, no one had seen Peter Green for a long, 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 long time. Mm -hmm. And no one really knew what he, what he was looking like now. Right. And this guy, apparently, I looked at him, I went again to Dexter's office, I said, I think I've met Peter Green. And I didn't buy the amp, it was broken. Uh, it, he said, really? I said, boy, just, he looked like him. And he said he used to play in the 60s, and he's got all this old Fox stuff. Um, and he's on a farm, you know, and it just looks like it might be him, but I didn't like to ask. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the shop thought he was Peter Green. I thought he was Peter Green. I opened up the Mojo magazine months later, The Imposter. Oh, wow. <laughs> and apparently the story goes, wow. he never ever said he was Peter Green. Right, it was just people Everybody assumed that. Everybody thought he was. How funny. And he was given guitars. Oh my god! Loads of stuff, and even I thought because I thought, right? Oh, could you, oh, you could, looking at the old pictures and I, it could have been him, you know. Right. And the shop that put me on to him thought he was him, but anyway, yeah, this thing come up, the imposter. That's incredible. You know, I heard about that. Yeah, yeah, he was in the Mojo, yeah. big, big national. I think movie. there might have been a guy that was impersonating Danny Kerwin too. Really? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, when these guys go out of this limelight for so long, right? Uh, and Anybody I, can get come, away with come it. Come back, back, you know. Yeah, and, people uh, can get away yeah, with it. You know, yeah. that was a terrible trip, man. I'm back now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, and that's all you got to say. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a movie about Stan, Stanley Kubrick, and there was a guy that impersonated him yeah. and got all kinds of freebies, yeah. you know. Yeah. But you know, this guy left. But apparently, really, he never. And he, he spoke to him, and he says, "I never, ever, ever said I was." Said I was. People just people assumed that. Him I was, and I thought. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> and he actually was the egg and potato man. He was so egg and potato. He played good guitar. He really? played egg and potato man at egg and potato farm in South End. I right. it's still there. I think I heard about that. Yeah, well, yeah, that's yeah, great. Yeah. So I did meet him and I thought it might be him too. That is nuts. You know? That is so funny. That would, have, that would have been in the early, very early 90s. That would be right, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that was kind of before he made his comeback. Oh yeah, he wasn't, yeah. no, once he made a comeback, he did the blokes. Right, he was busted, wasn't it? Yeah, right. right away. You know, no, no one have seen him. No yeah. one have seen him. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, I better get to work. Yes. Do the sound check. Thank you so Thank much, you. Steve. And I uh, hope folks out there enjoyed it. Uh, check out Steve Weston on on YouTube or um, buy one of his CDs. But check him out for sure because he's one of my favorite harp players over here in in uh, Europe. So. All right. Thank you.